All right, third graders, welcome to our second flip video. In this video, we're going to be talking about rounding. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, what are you talking about, Miss Sullivan? You have got to be kidding me. I've never heard of rounding. What is that all about? Well, don't worry. I'm going to tell you more. Okay, so when we're talking about rounding, what we mean when we say that rounding is we're finding an exact number. We're finding which 10 it's nearest to on a number line. So for example, if I have my number line between 10 and 20, and I was looking at the number 13, rounding means I'm going to decide if the number 13 is closer and nearest to 10 or if it's nearest to 20. So when you hear me say rounding, we're thinking about what 10 is our exact number nearest to. Here's our I can statement for this video. I can use the ones place value to round a two and three digit number to the nearest 10. So we're gonna be looking at two digit numbers, like 13, like we just talked about, and we're gonna extend that and talk about three number digit numbers, like 313. Okay, let's work on some practice problems. So if I gave you a number like 26, the first thing you're going to want to think about is where would I find 26 on a number line? So we should start with looking at our tens column, looking at the two. So if I was going to put 26 on the number line, I would start my number line with the number 20. And it would end with the next 10, which is the number 30. So to make my number line, I would have to think, where would 26 fall on the number line? So I, in the middle I know comes the number 25, because 25 is halfway between 20 and 30. And 26 would be about right here on the number line. So just looking at it, I can see that 26 is going to be closer to 30 rather than closer to 20. So if I was rounding 26 to the nearest 10, I would say my answer was 30. We can also look at three digit numbers like 326. The same rules apply. We look at the tens place and we see that there's a two in the tens place. So the 10 that is going to become a, come at the beginning of our number line is not just 20, but it's 320. And the next 10 on my number line is 330. In the middle, I have 325. And where would 326 go on my number line? It would be about right here. Oops, 26. So I can see, just by looking, that 326 is closer to 330. Now, I would like to give you some practice problems. I'm going to give you the number 32. And I want you to pause the video, and I want you to plot, put 32 on a number line between the tens 30 and 40. Pause your video and do that for me. Okay, so you should have put 32 on a number line between 30 and 40, and 32 would be somewhere in this area. Now we can tell just by looking that our 32 is closer to 30. So if we we're rounding 32 to the nearest 10, we would round it down to 30. Now I want you to try to put 422 on a number line. So pause the video and put 422 on the number line. Okay, your number line should look like this. Now, I purposefully did not tell you which two tens that 422 comes in between. I wanted you to look at the two and know 
that since there's a 2 in the tens place, then on the left-hand side of my number line, I'm going to have 420, and the next 10 is going to be 430. 422 comes right here on the number line. So 422 is going to be closer and nearest to 420. Now we have a trick that will help us to remember if we should round down to the nearest 10 or if we should round up to the nearest 10. There's a rule when we're looking at a number line. And you have your number line from 0 to 10. What goes in the middle? Hope you said 5. And let's fill in our spaces. I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to do that real quick. Poof. Magic. Isn't technology awesome? Okay, so if I have a number line from 0 all the way to 10, I have a trick that will help me remember if I should round down to the nearest 10 or if I should round up to the nearest 10. My trick is, whenever I'm dealing with a number that is in the ones place, that is 4 or below, that means it is a 4, a 3, a 2, a 1, or a 0, it's always going to go down to the nearest 10. And the reason is, is because if we counted spaces, it's much quicker for a 4 to move 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to this 10 than to go... One, two, three, four, five, six spaces to this 10. So the rule is that if it is 4 or below, we push it to the floor. Okay, we push it to the floor, we go down to the 10 on the left side of the number line. Now our rule is if it is, the other part of our rule is if it's 5, or larger, so that means the numbers 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, they were always going to round up to the next 10. We're always going to go to the 10 to the right of the number line. And that, again, it's the same rule, that if you have a 6, you only have to move 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces on the number line to get to this 10, but you would have to move 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 places to go down to this 10. So the rule helps us remember that we don't have to actually draw out a number line, but we can just remember in our heads that if it's 4 or lower, we're going to push it down. We're going to go down to the nearest 10. But if it is 5 or higher, we're going to go up to the nearest 10. Our rule is always like always that way and it will always work that way. So let me give you a problem. I want you to work with 52. And I want you without drawing a number line to tell me are we going to round 52 down to 50? Or are we going to round it up to 60? Think about it. What's in the ones place? It's a 2. Remember our rule 4 or below, we round down. So you should have said that we were going down to 50. The same thing works when you have a three-digit number, like 352. Look what's in the ones place. We have a 2 in the ones place again. Think about which two tenths is 350 in between on the number line. Are we going to round it down to 350 or are we going to round it up to 360? Which one? Think about it. The same rule works. If you have a 2 in the ones place, you're going to round down. So the answer was 350. Okay, I'm going to give you three numbers. The numbers are 27, 127, and 276. I want you to hit pause and I want you to round those three numbers to the nearest 10. Push play when you're ready. All right, the first number was 27. Are you going to round that down to 20? 
Are you going to round that up to 30? You should have said up to 30. Our second number was 127. Are you going to round that down to 120? Or are you going to round that up to 130? The correct answer was 130. Good job if you got it. And our final number was 276. Are you going to round that up? Pardon me, are you going to round that down to 270? Or are you going to round that up to 280? And again, you're going to round that up. Well done. So when we're in class, bring your whisk. Don't forget your whisk. When and where did you watch it? Write me a summary about the video and then ask me a question if you still have questions you don't understand something or if you really got it, create a challenge problem for one of our classmates to solve. Don't forget our summary should be more than one sentence. It should be a few sentences talking about the video. And let's finish with a joke. What do you call a cow with no legs? What do you call a cow with no legs? Come in and tell it to me. Have a great night, Monstars.